All right. How's it going? Hey, guys. Uh, let me know if you can hear me in the chat. I just got to go close my door to the crow's nest office here. But uh, look up. Oh, I already did that. You guys doing it all right? Hey, Cobra Crimson Cobra Commander and Lawrence Howard. There we go. We got both you guys in the chat. That's fine. I know I kind of sprung this one on you tonight. Uh, it is what it is, guys. Uh, tomorrow morning, I have to drive across town. My son's got cadets, so I won't be able to do a uh, Saturday morning with the, the crow. And then I got a buddy that's in there, the town, part of my... Uh, what little social circle I have left. And uh, so I was planning on spending the afternoon and evening with them. And so, yeah, I wasn't going to do a stream tomorrow. Uh, at best, I was going to do it Sunday night. But I felt like going over this tonight, showing you guys what we're working on. So, uh, hey, Jay Astro and Son of Crown Slayer, right on. Good to see you guys here. Shane Brayla, you're here. Awesome. Hey, guys, thanks very much for joining me tonight. Uh, I figured I would go for about an hour or so, uh, probably just cut off right before nine o'clock. Uh, I'm going to set up my tablet simultaneously whilst I uh, attend my own YouTube so I can see the chat a little bit better sometimes. I find two bank kongs always is a good thing. I don't know what that is. Ooh, that was bad business right there. Uh, let's go to my own live right now and see what's going on here. Uh, if I can find my own life. Hey, so I went out and bought some stuff there the other day. You guys, uh, if you saw my video on uh, Rakondo and the the 60th anniversary soldier, uh, while well, you read what Crimson uh, Cobra Crimson Commander has to update, he's gone ahead and changed his name, Loki War Tooth. I know you were feeling that pressure as well, but. Uh, our good friend Crimson Vader 007, that's actually Crimson Commander, or Cobra C Crimson Commander. Um, make sure you check out his channel. I checked it out the other day. He showed off a really nice Skyhawk. Uh, 3D printing, and he's open to some uh, feedback from us all. So let's go help this guy out and uh, get him some views, get him some likes, get him up there. Let's do that. Uh, so I don't know how to do the link, but make sure you just click on his name, open him up, and have a check out. Uh, there we go. So he already son a crown slayer was on that the other day. I'm just going to turn on some lights here. Uh, so I'm going to cover two things today. I'm going to cover the things that I bought there earlier in the week that I didn't really get into a whole lot uh, on the reviews. Because there are some ads, and it all goes speaking to backdrops and display space. That was what I wanted tonight's live to really be about, guys. So uh, out of the the however many I have in attendance tonight, um, how many of you are, are struggling with display space right now? Is there none or is there one? Um, out of seven, I figure there's got to be one. Right, and uh, I know it's something I always do, uh, I, I always end up struggling with uh, myself uh, because I move around a lot. Uh, for Warhammer 40k, I needed display space for my models, right? So I had my own little room in my basement uh, in my old place back when I owned my own house, and uh, then I got into hockey cards. That's easier to have display space because it can be mounted up on wall, and you got your books and all that other stuff. This is probably the biggest line of something I've collected uh, since comic books. And comic books, again, you got boxes, row boxes, you stack them. Ah, occasionally you put some covers out there, but you don't want the sun getting at your comic books, right? But Joe is the first time where I've been like, my God, even the display space considerations are amplified with these figures in a way I wasn't expecting. So you see me do a lot of videos on that lately. Um, Display space, what is that? Yeah, exactly. Um, and oh, okay. And Bobby, you're remodeling. Yeah, so there there you go too. There's another another uh feeling I've had too lately. It's uh the more I try to jig some shelves around, I have to take all the models down and put them on a box. And if I don't get back to that for a couple of days, I feel like oh, I feel bad. I feel like a waste of my figures happening there. Like that's money in the box. I'm supposed to be looking at it and enjoying it. It's in a box because I have problems with the display space. Um, and it's really my own, it's my own beast, right? Like, yeah, anybody can put their figures in online. 
look at my great line of figures. Oh, don't they look at home standing there in perfect rows of five. Uh, yeah, we could all do that, but that's not what brought us to this hobby, is it? Eh? You had to purge a lot of your collection. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you're collecting multiple toys and multiple things, yeah. Like, uh, we can't all dedicate uh, the same amount of space, right? If you look at, um, like, for myself, my old house, I had pretty much the whole basement. I had my own hobby room. I, I could spread out wherever I wanted. I was in a bigger house. But when we moved back to Ontario, Ontario, as I call it, um, not so much, not so much. And we're in this little rental and we're ready to, you know, we're, we're trying to get our next house in line and, and, and settle down for our retirement. But this little rental's got no space. And, and you see me struggling with display space. I've got these little Costco shelves and a desk and whatever I can muster together. Hell, half my storage area is just Costco boxes taped together, right? So, um, yeah, so today... What I'm kind of getting into is I when I I, I was I was tuning in to, to Punkle Toys and he was talking with um was it Bobby? No. No, I, I'm not sure who he was talking to at the time. My memory's gotten hazy in my age. Um, uh, but it was talking about uh oh sorry, it was on Ozanandis live stream and Punk was a part of that live stream. And they were talking about display space and world building. And I thought, you know, like so nice to see a council of guys talking about that stuff because I've been, you know, quietly, not so quietly, mentioning my end state, how I picture my dystopian Joe shelf, right? And and I build my terrain around that. And what I was realizing was I was only building small little modular pieces that I could shift around and get the feel of a, of a shelf, right? But what I want to start doing this week, and I've been at it all week, actually, and into next week, is I actually have a story for that terrain sitting there. Like, it's nothing fancy, but we look at G.I. Joe and they've got three real major elements and then an in-betweener, right? And I, so I guess I should say four. So you have your Navy Joes, you have your Army Joes, you have your Air Force Joes, and you have your, we'll say, logistics and support and everything in between, support Joes, right? And so the Navy Joes would look good with a Navy display. The Arctic Joes with an Arctic one, the Army ones with an Army one. Sorry, the, I, I forgot to mention the Arctic ones. So more than a few types. But you see what I'm saying? There's categories, right? So that's what I want my, my shelf to look more like. If there's an Arctic story to be told, great. Put tell it there with your Joes. And that, to me, is really getting even just a little bit more out of the hobby, right? So I'm going to show you some hacks I have for that today. Uh, Lawrence, you have no room for your figures, right? And a lot of that is people forget depth and height of shelves and things like that, or how posing can actually give you more room. So I don't know, maybe uh, I think a lot of what I think about and, and putting out there, I thought is often the low hanging fruit thinking, but sometimes I realize I, I just have a different perspective on things and maybe it's best to share that in case it's not what I think it is. Maybe you guys haven't thought of these kind of dimensional challenges with your shelves. So you have a four foot table and a six foot table. Yeah, I have two eight foot tables in my garage right now that I've had since uh, since forever, right? And uh, do you think they've ever made their way in the house? No, because they weigh about as much as a, as a small bike trailer, like freaking heavy as hell. It's two man lift every time and this old man's done doing that. You know, I don't have corporals to lift with anymore. I'm sure as hell I'm not doing with my back or my knees now. So in the garage they stay. So I stick with Costco shelving. And uh, let's talk about Costco shelving for a second. Uh, it's cheap, sure. It's not the cheapest. Cheapest I think I've seen has been Walmart, where they have an equivalent brand, right? And that's about the price of a figure right there, guys. So if you're struggling with some display space, if it's just shelving, Sacrifice the cost of a figure and grab one of these and get started with that. Uh, if it's actual cubic feet to put something in, that's a different issue. That's your house move. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I'm just scrolling down the chat. Like I said, uh, we got uh, Woody, two tw uh, Woody Trip Deuce, um, my favorite Arctic bat, Triple Deuce. 
I didn't even realize I'd named that after Woody. I was like, where did that number come from? It, it's Woody Triple Deuce. It's from playing trivia against this Enigma machine that is that bad. Uh, vehicles are much bigger than they used to be. Absolutely. And that's, you know, we've, we've visited that topic so many times on so many ways with our channels. Um, as far as uh, the the whole what's what you call it there vehicles issue sorry I, what i'm trying to do right now is i'm trying to get it so that the stream show the the comment shows up on the uh like i know it's showing up on the side there but i'm trying to get it so it shows up uh everywhere yeah so i was thinking it would be like that let me try it like that or like that done no no, I don't like this uh, solo there. We'll go there. Okay, I'm not sure what's going on. Yeah. What do you should be honored? You broke into my subconscious and started living rent free. I didn't even know you were there. Uh, yeah, trivia killer. He's probably got an entire shelf of Aaron the Toy Enhancer one prizes. <laughs> and that's just not including the ones that he's given away to the guy who came in just after him, right? Like, what are your graceful guy? You really, you guys are all class acts, but. I know what he has often said, no, we're good today, Aaron, right? And I see guys doing that, and I'm like, yeah, I, I think I'd be the same way. And it gets that way when you have a lot of jokes, right? And you're being practical. It's not what I need. It's not what I collect. I don't need any more of those. Um, there's other people in this community that should have that. Pass it on. Yeah, I can understand that thinking. I've thought that way, too. Um Although I've never come close to winning on the trivia. I just been on other prizes. I've, I've entered draws knowing I wasn't going to ex accept the prize because I was just like, yeah, whatever. I just want to play. Uh, so Aaron's a great example of a guy who has a massive collection, but he's able to dedicate a lot of room to it. And he's able to creatively solve spatial issues. If you look at one thing that Aaron has done, if I may be so bold, and I know, uh, yeah, uh, it's not polite to talk about somebody uh, when they're not there. <laughs> uh, but no, uh, Aaron might pop by. He might not. Same as Drawl. I put the invitations out there, but I haven't heard back from him. Drawl said, I don't think so, but we'll see. But uh, yeah, either way, it's, I didn't plan around the uh, the, the, the uh, backyard battlefield crew getting together tonight. It was my stream for a bit, but if they drop by, we'll, we'll see them in the guest room there and we'll pop them on. But if you look at his room, one thing that he's done that he utilizes that a lot of people don't is the center areas of the room, the forward of the shelves, right? Uh, that big Cobra Terradrome, things like that. He, you also don't see he shifts from area to area. So it's not like it's a, it's a dedicated room. It's regions of room, as I understand it. And I'm hoping to know this as I'm hoping to still be able to get out to Joe Fest uh, despite some obstacles in the way. Uh, and I'm planning on visiting Aaron and, and checking out that workspace because I feel like he's just telling us a really good story on the camera. And, and that area is beautiful. Of course, I'd want to walk the room and take it all in. But you can see he's got a lot of toy lines in there, right? But, and it goes with what I've been saying on this. Can you merge rooms? Can you have... G.I. Joe, merging with your Valivers? Yeah, of course you can. Can you have it merging with your Heyman? Well, some people would say no, but maybe, right? Can you cross it over with some of those horror toys out there? Sure. Anything 6 and 12 inch should be on, on, on point, right? Some people need it separated, right? Some people need it categorized, like me. I categorize it by element and by story play. Some people categorize it other ways, right? Uh, but all the way, you need space. So one of the things I was talking about is depth. Okay. Value Village is where I go to get a lot of my terrain stuff, guys. And uh, depth for me, uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles versus G.I. Joe. My God, am I getting a lot out of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. I'll show you later. Depth for me uh, means being able to utilize multiple levels and uh, sections of a shelf. So if you were to look at, a, let's go over to this shelf right here. Let's use a, an example of this shelf right here. Like I'm going to be tearing all these apart and restructuring them because I, I've got the sketches done. And that's, that was the big thing. I had to think of what was it I was picturing? What does the sketch layout look like? And what would that look like as a shelf? Could you, could you, 
could you even display a figure there without much props? You know, it's things like that, right? Uh, and yeah, Bobby, I did see that Fang 2 photo. Thank you very much. I was just getting things uh, ready to record. And uh, yeah, I appreciated that, right? So uh, here, I'm just going to grab some pumps of wood to show you what I'm talking about. Okay. And one of these trusty things. So one of the biggest things I find uh, presenting figures, even as amateur as it is, and Crimson Vader, this is something I want you to consider as well, buddy. You've asked for advice, so I'm going to give you advice. Have a prop stage of some sort when you're presenting something. You'll see, I'll, I'll try these days to try and, uh, and have some sort of prop set like, like this, right, to present a figure upon. And what I realized is the feedback was, was that my lighting wasn't great. So I've been trying to improve the lighting situation. But uh, you want to have a prop set. And if it rotates... Like, say, a Lazy Susan, which is a simple kitchen aid that you can pick up at your local thrift store for probably three bucks. That's great for your camera and that's great for your display. If you wanted to get a little fancier when you're presenting a figure and just one figure, you have these things at your, oh, there we go, at your friendly local model store. Wherever your city is, if you have a model store, somewhere around where they have the little glass dome cases to display your car or truck model. They should have these. These should be less than $10. They're solar powered, but they also work off a AA battery. I don't use mine a lot because it makes a little squeaky, squeaky, grindy, grindy electric noise, and I don't like it. Uh, but it was cool. And as you can see, it fits one one figure, really. Uh, that was inspired by Aaron, the toy enhancer. He made, you know, he made his a long time ago, and I was like, man, I just really, I've got to get that together. And I had those boxes tucked away. And you know what I felt like doing today? That. So I said I was going to tell you guys about sectors. I'm just going to get caught up in the chat for a second. So Bobby, getting one in two weeks, and it should be amazing. Getting rid Fang? Oh, yeah, the Fang thing. Okay. Uh, oh, the, uh, or the display, the stage. Okay. So you saw me, you heard me say uh, sectors. Okay. So when I'm talking about depth, I divide a shelf into basically three sectors. So you have your forward sector, your central sector, and your rear sector, right? Depending on how many figures you're you're displaying, um, you could go one in the first sector, two, three in the second sector, four, five, six in the seventh sector, and that would be fine, right? But maybe you've got a lot more. That's where things like these stupid dying breed Keurig things that are selling like jube jubes in a candy store so cheap at... Uh, Dollar stores, they come in handy, right? Uh, because then you can elevate your rear rank and you can start closing things in together. I'm sorry, I'm way behind him on the chat, am I? Well, hang on, guys. Uh, Loki Wartooth is here. Cool. All right. Uh, uh. All right. Uh. Yeah, I apologize, guys. I, uh, hmm. I got way behind on the chat. Anyways. So now you can see the first sector is on the lower part. I can stack a lot of figures on that first sector, go to that second sector on another level, stack, and I can actually now, because they're able to be closed in, go up to four sectors because this is high, right? So elevating is one little way to get it on a very small space, but you don't have to go and try and find fancy shit. Um, but I, uh, what I do with those is I bury them under these things. Uh, let's do it. Well, I'll just bring it to you. These little pads of grass you see under here. Uh, I think I've spoken to them about them before. They're just dollar store. Uh, they're about a buck 50 for a 12 by 12 centimeter sheet there. And, uh, yeah, that's just perfect for half your displays. Just some, a simple lawn is enough for you to, to have something there, right? Um, but what I'm going to be doing right now is you see me, I'm firing on my glue gun, uh, El Trusty Cavadoro here. And I am going to be slapping together some more jungle terrain. So I've got some, um, got some scrap pieces of wood kicking around. I'm just letting that glue gun warm up because I, I have something I didn't do earlier and I've been watching to do it. 
So little scrap pieces of wood, that's why I get rid of nothing. That's good for making little modular pieces. But what I'm thinking today is I need a corner piece. If you look at a, a shelving right now. <laughs> uh, yeah, sorry. Still not caught up in the chat. I, I need basically something to go on a corner uh, where my shelving ends so that when a figure does fall, duh, he doesn't fall off the shelf, right? So that's one thing. I'm going to make some uh, uh, straight-edged uh, jungle pieces for boundaries. But after that, I'm switching back to doing some urban and winter stuff in there. But I'm going to show you some stuff I'm using. Um, I'm still, yeah, I just did this on the video today. Uh, guys, I'm telling you, this is the best hack about that soldier is folding it up as a rucksack cover. I, uh, I'm i so happy I found that. I don't know. Did Hasbro talk about this at any point on their, on their things? I've been asking because I was like, did they intentionally make that pouch for that? Because our, our jackets in the military, our weather gear, uh, we have zippers in the bottom of it, like a lot of the modern hiker jackets do. So you can roll it up inside itself, zip, make it into a little pillow. Right. And uh, everything's got utility. I thought that was fantastic. I wanted to ask if you guys seen that. Uh, there we go. So, uh, yeah. So some of the materials I'm going to be using today on the uh, on this stuff is I talked about my fake grass. I've got these vines. I'm not going to cut these vines up. What I'm going to use is I'm going to use them to hang down off the top of the shelf for some of that jungle terrain, right? So I've got some themes I'm covering. I've got uh, a tiger forest doing a link up uh, near a forest ambush. One that I'm trying to figure out. I want to work in some road. I want to work in forest. So I've got to get those palm leaves out of there because that's not really forest. That's jungle. So I've got to Got to make the right trees for it and work it up. And then I want to have some asphalt. So that that's just, just to remind me what's going to be of, of a display like that. That winter one is going to go up top uh, where the X-Wing is because I'm going to incorporate that, uh, that ice stuff that I picked up from another thrift store, that frozen display that I've broken down. Just have that in the background to white it up, right? So... That is probably my favorite thing to do now is to go to a thrift store and have a look at what kind of display kind of stuff they have. Uh, yeah, and Jay Astro uses the same stuff I do, yeah. Okay, uh, oh, Kiwi GI Customs. Hey, guys, how you doing today? Right on. Good to have you in here. Uh, thanks for coming by the chat. Hey, guys, if you, if you don't mind... Uh, you know, it's like signing in the guest book. Mine just is a like button. Do you mind signing my guest book with that like button? That's awesome. Thanks very much. Uh, so yeah, Jay Astro, you use a lot of the fake greenery stuff as well. I find it used to be a lot cheaper when I did war table terrain, but uh, for 40K, you, you had less considerations. Everything was alien trees, so it was great to get purple, whatever. To get realistic looking greenage and foliage is actually not too bad at your dollar store. Or if you have a Michaels, uh, you probably, if you have a membership, you probably get a coupon, get some good stuff. But what I did was I picked up more than an abundance for this weekend for me to finally put my forest and my jungle terrain behind me as far as what I was looking for there. This is the one that I'm, I'm, I was thinking about today and I was like, yep, yeah, that's another story when I wanted. I wanted my Navy one to be a sub pen. Uh, like a submarine pen, I wanted the Joes to be uh, to be loading a, a, a sub or something like that, or a watercraft, right? Oh, with the dogs. So I didn't realize, I forgot I was sitting on this. This is how cramped we've been. I have the perfect table for that without having to get into resins uh, to do water because it's an Arctic sub pen. I have a light up table and that's great for doing stencils and everything through, but uh if I were to do my dock up around this area, this would be the water. And uh, I thought that was, that's worth doing. Nothing will be glued down to that. But again, that's uh, some display space that you're going to see from, from here on in, I think. So I'm just going to get caught up in the chat again. Ask, what are you guys doing tonight? It's Friday night. Uh, we, like, what kind of stuff are we doing on a Friday night? Remember when we were younger? I remember Friday night, uh, this time of night in the Army when I was a young guy. 
I'd probably already be half liquored, waiting to go to the bars and impress all the ladies with my amazing dancing and my swift charm and sick abs. Um, but that was a, an entire lifetime ago. Now I just uh, amazed them by falling asleep pretty much right after I paid the guy at the door. Um, so what are you all doing? Let's find out. Tell me in the chat. Is, is anybody working on hobbies right now? Uh, anybody doing what I'm doing? Uh, but I think my glue gun is warmed up. I'm going to find a nice little... This one I'm going to be painting white later. There we go. I'll find some nice little pieces that I want to do some trees on. I'll make this look a little easy here. Hey, yeah, uh, so you, uh, Crimson Commander, my boy here. Uh, it's brand new, starting out his channel, managed to pump out a couple of videos. Like I said, uh, I'm going to check out the other ones. Oh, good, those are broken. That's perfect. Perfect. Happy little accidents. Um, but I, so far I've only seen your Skyhawk video, buddy. And, uh, what I really liked about that video is, yeah, it's a 3d print, but you, uh, you went into it and you told us basically what else was available through that guy. You got it from things like that. You provided us the critical information, uh, worth sharing on that one. So I, I appreciated that video, buddy. And I, uh, I look forward to seeing what the next video is. Sorry. Uh, yeah. X-Men 97 Woody. I am. Mm. So doggedly staying away from that and I'm doing it like to, to make myself mad. Really? I think that's the only advantage here. It's, it's me trying to exercise control on, well, you can only really, really love one of these things. You can either love your X-Men like you always had from ages like 10 till 47, <laughs> or you can uh, you can get right in with this G.I. Joe shit. And I look aside and I'm throwing right in with the G.I. Joe shit. It's like I said, uh, you know, the, the, the idea of growing the channel is to just bring in more G.I. Joe shit. And then uh, just do stuff with it, right? Now, all those contests and things like that. But also just help out other channels like the way a couple of guys have done for me right now. So uh but the 97s i would i would be broke every day and i'm already having a hard time with this wave trying to keep on top of it right so uh sorry which was your favorite woody by the way which x-men's your favorite right i always ask people that sorry uh so kiwi sorry you're uh so you're down in australia are you not uh your accent comes out in your in your uh, in your comments, and I'm assuming Kiwi Australians. Uh, yeah, uh, it's great to have you here. So it's Saturday there. You stop for lunch, and now you're gonna go back and mow the lawn. All right. Well, it's always good to have a visit from the future, right, Marty? We got to talk about your kids um, <laughs> from Australia. That's awesome. Wow. Okay. I wonder what international shipping to Australia is like. Uh, let me know if I'm wrong about that. New Zealand, pardon me. Thank you. New Zealand, Kiwis, New Zealand, thank you. Um, either way, yeah, different time zones. Uh, crazy, crazy stuff, man. Uh, that's great. And so you are an eight, yeah. And uh, Crimson Commander, you, you're a big Gambit fan. I loved Gambit uh, for the longest time. Uh, it was my favorite X Men. I'll tell you why in a second. You just finished a kayak and jetpack for custom iceberg and some extra kit. Yeah. Okay. So son of crayon slayer. Yeah. I am. Uh, I'm following suit. Me and Loki War Tooth. Uh, we had a. We had a big, 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 big order go through. I guess. Uh, it, it should be arriving soon. It's been at customs, but in it is my B two stalker kit, and I am also going to do a GI Joe kayak. So. That's another thing I need incorporated into this winter scene is I need a small little shoreline edge. So these are all just really rough right now. What I'm trying to do is do some more permanent shelving, right? So, uh, yeah. Okay, so Gambit, I'm going to say tell you about Gambit. Gambit came at a time when grunge and, uh, you know, the, the, the almost effeminate hair of men, you know, it was the, like the first goth era almost typo negative was like the big band and it was just a bit before that i remember when little storm was caught stealing and gambit helped her out of the jam and she was the young one because of the nanny or something like that 
And Gambit was the bad boy the X-Men needed. He was the wild card that Wolverine had ceased to be. And uh, everybody hooked on. But all of a sudden, he was everywhere. And he was getting away with that hot pink purple uniform, right? Uh, very much, very cool. He had that gauge on accent. Uh, share. Uh, and then, of course, in the comics, he had this air of uh, mystery about him. Because he was the witness, the last man to see the X-Men alive. And then you find out, well, no, he actually led the Marauders to the the Morlocks so that they could be wiped out. And they've retconned that for a thousand reasons, which I, I, I've watched on things like JLS Comics and other guys talk about it, but I'm not going to put it here. But Gambit stopped being my favorite um, after he picked up way too much momentum and he was getting way too much of his own stuff. Um like his own series, he had two back-to-back miniseries. I was like, okay, you're, you're killing him like Deadpool. Because, uh, yeah, believe it or not, back in the 90s, Deadpool was exactly as popular as he was uh, in 20, say 20, 2018, 2019. Uh, and then amazingly less so towards the end of that. Same as Gambit. Cable, Cable I liked. Uh, Cable's another one. Gets a really weird history, but he's cool. Every time I think I'm done getting Magneto figs, they make a better one. Yeah, Magneto. And you're like, yeah, this Magneto from the X-Men 97, I don't have Disney Plus. I lost my streaming. I, I don't care. I don't find a lot of time to watch. Uh, but at one point, I'm going to watch X-Men 97. But I see that in Magneto inherits the inherits the, uh, the Westminster Academy. And uh, they're following a lot of older story arc. And Magneto actually looks more like the Joseph story arc right now with the long hair and Youthful but wise sage character. Uh, Rogue, yeah. Rogue's never going to be anything more than that Southern Belle with a good punch to me. Like, I don't know. Um, I know the comics gave her a lot of depth, but the cartoons never seem to give her much more than just, Damn, sugar, I wish I could touch you. Uh, Turkish Murphy's in the house. Great. Good to have you here. And sorry, still getting up there. Two in the other. Yeah, two two Magneto's in the 97 line already, eh? Uh, yeah, the House of M story. That was one of my favorite because, you know, Brian, Brian Michael Bendis was one of the best writers for me to go out on. I think he was the last of the real good story writers uh, I saw when, before I left comics. And he was doing things like House of M, which had... Easter eggs upon Easter eggs upon Easter eggs as we went into the next big thing and the next big thing, like Civil War to Secret Invasion to Siege to all these things. Bendis was like this puppeteer. Uh, and I loved that stuff. So seeing seeing figures hallmarking from an era that Bendis wrote, like uh, Secret Invasion or Civil War, proper Civil War, would be amazing. Uh Yeah. And so Loki's not a fan of the 97 and it is it's fine. You're going to just like Joe, you can take them or leave them. Right. But I mean, it's great that they're out there. And again, it's that it's the same thing I talked about with Joe. They targeted the audience and said, Oh, look at you. You're all adults with kids of your own. Now, what if we brought back a nostalgia toy of something you really thought was cool, this cartoon. And by the way, Disney's making a new one. The, the, the damn we're like, I want it. Uh, okay, so getting organized. Not getting much done with that glue gun, are you? Crow. No. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to slap uh, which plants do I want to use? These things. So watch how easily this happens. Pluck, pluck. Pluck, pluck. Right? So if I need a small piece of modular terrain, just a little thing to tuck in. I want a tree line for Stalker to hide behind, let's say. Okay, if I want a tree line, I want Stalker to hide behind. I'll uh, pluck off a few of those. One, two. One, two. And I've got those brush. And it's exactly as simple. Uh, maybe I paint this green and brown first, but I'm not for this video. I'm just going to lay down big globs of hot, scolding my thumb every effing time. Blue. And that's all my train is, guys. Aquarium plant bullshit from the dollar store. A hell of a lot of hot glue. Some burning sexy pain. And uh, that, that's pretty much it. 
Legend Series is here. Nice to have you here. Thanks for stopping by and joining me on this uh, this Friday night. You know, I like to live dangerously. No vodka in sight. I quit drinking several years ago, guys. Uh, well, not several. Oh, three years ago. And I'll tell you. Uh, it's no secret that I, I just really transferred to cannabis because that was what medically I was supposed to be doing with all my afflictions. Uh, <laughs> but uh, no, I... I, I, I quit drinking because I, I mastered it. I was the best drinker I knew. I could drink better than anybody uh, in the military. And uh, yeah, and I could drink more. And I, I could do it way better. And I would actually get to the point where I was going to be a really good driver. <laughs> no, that's just my way of saying, like, I was happy to quit alcohol. I clearly had a very big problem with it. So my Friday nights changed a lot for me. Once that happened, and I embraced my inner nerd and stopped being a, you know, a drowning sad case, I got, got myself some help. And yeah, well, by help, I mean I helped myself. I actually didn't join any support group to do that. I, uh, I did that on my own cold turkey. And I mean, I was drinking every night. I drink at least a Mickey whiskey every night for about uh, several years. I won't, I won't put the, I won't put the true number because it's always so sad. <laughs> it was a lot, but uh, yeah, I was very proud of doing that. But what I find is this hobby became so much more interesting, like just hobbies in general. Once you, once you get rid of that toxic crap out of your life and there's nothing wrong with alcohol or there's nothing wrong with getting drunk from time to time, but all things in moderation, right guys? So if you're drinking tonight, I'm proud of you. Have a great time. Uh, but uh, when you toast me, just understand I'm drinking coffee. All right. Uh, hot glue is your main go when you repair anything. Yeah, me too. Uh, I go through probably about 10 bucks of hot glue every time I sit down to do hobbies, right? So one thing when hot glue is drying, I find uh, with these viney pieces, I'll hang them upside down as it's going just so that they stand up straight as they dry. Didn't do that for you as here, but. It's a little time consuming, but it's kind of worth it when the hot glue dries on them properly and they don't lean on you. But, yep, that's pretty much all there is to that kind of terrain. Uh, so, why don't I just stop bullshitting like this is any kind of complicated stuff and you guys haven't picked the gist of it. And I'll move on to something more interesting. <laughs> Which, to me... <clears throat> Uh, I've got a few interesting things I want to show you, but the first one's going to be these $3 figures I found today. Styroglue, yeah. Oh, sorry, Kiwi. Okay, team, you're going back to the lawn. Oh, I lost to grass cutting again, you know. Just like my girlfriend's always used to tell me, oh, I got to go do my hair. Got to go mow my lawn. No, it's all good, Kiwi. Thank you so much for spending that time with me, and uh, I appreciate it, man. It's always good. Make sure I, uh, I hope to see you again on the next one. Okay. Uh so Styro grew uh, a man, Loki. I don't know what you got down there in Louisiana. I think it is that you're at. Um, you've got products out there that I never heard of, man. And it's funny because I'm like, I even tried to picture <laughs> you just telling me about a bit like, what? You didn't use no Styro goo? The hell's styro goo i'm using hot glue no man styro goo <laughs> like what is no but i've never heard of that styro glue uh or goo but i'll have to google that if that's better than hot glue because i got a lot of blisters <laughs> from using that uh so let's do the three dollar figs i didn't open them I, earlier but i i've been dying to i couldn't believe that guys and i meant what i said um I was kind of hoping Riley Cross and uh, and, and uh, Hush the Mute or uh, Hush Hideout, Hush Hangout, Hush Hideaway, my buddy Hush. <laughs> Two guys I know are here in Ottawa. Uh, I definitely want you guys to go check out your local WalMarts if you uh, if you want to go see maybe get some uh, figures at a lower price because the classified from a couple of waves ago, shipwreck and all them, they're they're selling at twenty five bucks Canadian right now, which is a reasonable price. Uh, and very rare for Walmart to ever sell anything at a reasonable price when it comes to classified. But they also have their Night Force figures on the shelf right now. 
Uh, well, at least two of them. They had the Night Forest Tunnel Rat and the Night Forest Wolf Spider. Now, I'm going to tell you why I didn't buy the the Tunnel Rat. Because like I said, I, I basically blew my weekly figure budget this week. And uh, the next week is going to be in between pre-orders. I made an arrangement to pick up a, a, the Snow Sniper, uh, Snow Serpent. Uh, I know Aaron gave me one, uh, and that was so kind of him. Um, but I had already arranged to buy one as well. Um, be from this guy because he's really having a hard time on Facebook garage sale. And I didn't know Aaron was sending me that, but it worked out well. Cause then I get to review both versions at the same time. Like I wanted to do with the desert soldier. But, um, yeah, Walmart, I, I figured somebody had to have returned their, their night force at some point. Maybe that's why they were on the shelf. So I didn't bother picking up the, the tunnel rat. Uh, it was at the regular price of 35 bucks anyways. Um, because I'm already getting one from, from my friend Jay. And so why do that? And I didn't pick up the, the wolf spider just because again, it wasn't that great of a savings. And as much as I want to get another wolf spider, I want somebody to watch this video and I want them to go get themselves a wolf spider because they didn't get it. And uh, Riley, if that's you, more power to you. Uh, anybody in Ottawa that didn't get at the night for stuff, go get it. And anybody who has a Walmart in their area, be you in Canada, uh be you wherever in the u.s netherlands australia peru mexico london <laughs> london is falling um go check out your walmart and see if they're doing the same thing because like i said i had heard that walmart was purging and we might not be getting regular classified stock at several walmart locations tomac five tomacs five zamons for 17 17 is not a bad price, actually. Yeah. So 17, I'm assuming, is your U.S. price, which is uh, that's our 25, guys. That's uh, that's close to it. Kiwi, would I be interested in doing a live stream with you in the future? Absolute. Whoa, Jesus, I didn't even see that. Absolutely, I would. Kiwi Customs, uh, if we could work out the time zone thing, uh, I would be open to doing a live stream with anybody who wanted to do a live stream and talk about this sort of stuff absolutely uh in fact if you if you uh really enjoy talking about this stuff and uh, we work it out who knows maybe uh, maybe the the rest of the the backyard uh the backyard battle boys or battlefield boys will want to talk to you too and we'll all get together one day who knows but yeah, always send me a message, uh, Kiwi Customs, to my Insta, or you can uh, use my Gmail that's on the channel description to get a hold of me, or you can just tell me how to get a hold of you here in the chat. And uh, or no, wait, you can't do it in the chat. I can't see the chat when I rewatch this. Do it one of those ways, <laughs> or talk to me in a future live better when you don't have to go mow your lawn. Uh, yeah. Yeah, 13 more subscribers. Yeah, uh, we've been at this point for a little while, and it, that's all cool, man. That's the uh, one thing I wanted to tell you guys when you're because I know, I know, Crimson, you, you started your channel, and I know I got another buddy that's uh, looking at starting one. We've got people that have just started them and are learning as they go, just like I have to, you know. And uh, so I'm going to tell you some stuff that. You know, eventually I had the right guys telling me some stuff, and I'm always listening. Like, listen to the guys who have been where you've been, right? Aaron the Toy Enhancer is a big one. I ask him for advice a lot, uh, and then I know to listen to the other guys. Uh, I've never gotten direct advice from Punk with Toys, but I've listened to the, the advice he's given other guys. And I know, you know, I have a lot of shortcomings on my channels. So my, my, my tip to you is manage your expectations, Always try to do one thing just a little bit better than you did the last time, and uh, don't let don't let your worst voices set the pace for what you're trying to do, right? Uh, and I was trying to speak to that when I was saying how all the fever of this wave almost had me feeling horrible about buying figures and and making bad deals, like waiting on on what doing what was right with other people because. I was suddenly blinded by this idea that I just had to stay on top of things, right? You don't. Stay on top of yourself. Let the other things come. People will watch your content for what you bring to it, not necessarily what it always is. Ah, uh, $5 Ross returns. Uh, 
that was for the uh the Zaymonts, yeah. Uh so I tore apart my Tomax and Zaymont. I'm doing a repaint on mine. Uh I I like my crimson strike ones just fine, but the, the original ones that I bought, I had them in the box. They count as bought and collected. I find I'm just not displaying them. I don't care where they are. So I figured I was going to do an end state variant of those. So $5, $5 Tomax and Zaymon. Yeah, okay. If you've got them, why would you buy them? Well, to rip them apart. Bare arms. Workable torsos. It's not Duke. <laughs> you know? Uh, if you're into conversions, go get yourself some more $5 Tomax and Zaymons and Order some 3D print, printed heads and parts. Yeah, the cod piece is kind of a weird one. Uh, I think you can replace it. I'd have to look. I got mine's drying from Prime, or it's tucked away in the primer area, sorry. Uh, but the rest of that stuff all comes off. It's a workable figure, guys. Take advantage of that. There we go. And yeah, it's on a crown slayer. Yeah, getting that uh, info from him. Okay, so I want to open Tarantula because I got him for three friggin' dollars at Walmart today. I could, I, I ran that thing through the price checker like four times. This was one of those cases of just, I was just passing by. I said, I wonder. I thought maybe they were bringing it down. I thought at best, oh, I wonder if it's like 16 bucks now. Hmm, not bad for 16 bucks. These are usually around 29 bucks, right? Uh, no. Three friggin' dollars, and guys, I'm in Canada. So for you Americans, my 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 friends up there, and we're talking about the what? Two bucks for you? Two dollar figure? How you gonna how you gonna walk by a two dollar figure? <laughs> right? So I'm not even opening the best one. I'm just getting tarantula out of the way because he was just the first one. I must have spent at least another 45 minutes trying to find the next one and going, oh my God, I hope there is more. And then like a little kid skipping to the uh, skipping to the price check machine with an armload of figures and a couple of these in there going, oh, I hope, oh, I hope there's still all $3. And it was awesome, Shane. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for cheering me as I try not to gash my femoral artery open with this here rusty ass exacto knife. Guys, can I just tell you, if you're not using a rusty-ass X-Acto knife box cutter for at least three things in a day, then they haven't done their job selling these to you. I have these everywhere. And do I ever find a brand new one with a fresh blade? No. Old Stitchy here is the one that's always lying around. All right. There. Now, for some reason, I've saved the card. Good for me. Yeah, for three bucks, right? I absolutely can't. $16.99. Yeah, and that's what I would expect to pay for him. Um, I bought the Tyra one. And there's my Tyra girl. Right? I wound up using the, the second head. Oh, look at the sign I found. Do it. <laughs> um, went up using that second hand for one of my end state characters, right? I uh, just gave it a repaint. Maybe not my best decision, but not my worst. Whatever. Conversion is fun. Learning is fun. But yeah, she's uh, she's one I just won't turn a conversion into. Like, you tell me you couldn't make something fun with like a sexy Joe Bikini, Scarlet, whatever. Cover girl back before she was a Joe thing. Just by doing repaints, you could. But there's just something about Tiger. She's already just so damn cool. Like I said, she's my Tiger Force mascot that I'm almost... I don't know why I don't display her more. It's got to be the tail. Yeah. But good figure. It, uh, like, so, so we got, that's what I like about Marvel Legends is, like, if you got a guy like I got a guy, my guy's name is Loki Wartooth. Sometimes it's Model Misfits 1138. Sometimes he borrows other people's names like Aaron. And other times he's just other people. <laughs> I'm trying to remember what other names he's used. But, no, he's legit. It says he's got a lot of uh, handles because he's in a lot of different platforms. But uh, if you got a guy like Model Misfits 1138 on Instagram, Loki Wartooth here, uh, he prints up 3D vests or 3D printed vests that work really well with figures like these because they're very narrow and articulate, just like a Joe Classified would be. This is the same 
kind of great articulation that we have with Quick Kick right now. Except he's got these pointy owie ow shoes. Ow, ow. I wonder, do they just pop slide out? Well, they are worked right into that toe. Yeah. So, uh, like I said, when I when I think about a ninja that I wanted to make out of it, I was thinking about whether the knife feet would work or whatnot. But clearly, you would have to add enough to this and get rid of this head to make it not look like tarantula to even start with that idea. Uh, boop, 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 boop. Baroness was in a bikini in that one episode. Yeah, somebody else was talking about, I think it was like figures you, you would wish would come kind of thing. Like all oh, the ones I, I hope one day. Baroness Bikini was, uh, or Bikini Baroness was on there. Yeah, that's all right. Not bad for $3. $3 well spent. I mean, like, look at that. What? Let's see. Let's see Storm Shadow or Snake Eyes do that shit. Wow. Well, Snake Eyes might Storm Shadow look. That is a very articulate figure. That is really like, man, I'm just I'm just fucking with it. I didn't even have to heat anything up. It comes out the box like that, right? Um there is so much reuse I could see with uh, that head. Maybe doing a visor or goggles or just doing something. But yeah, there's a lot to be done here. Cool pickup. Well done, me. I'm proud of me. You should go have a joint later and celebrate for yourself. I will, me. Thank you. It's so awful. I know. I love you. I love you too. Oh, you guys are still watching. Okay, uh, let's open up that other one. Uh, we're going to do this one, like I said. This one I was going to buy full price when I saw it uh, because I was like, is he pinless? Uh, nope. Nope, he's not. You can see them. But this other one, when I started thinking I'm going to do the Black Oni, and I was thinking about the look I wanted my ninjas to have, as opposed to, say, these are Aragakashi blue ninjas and red ninjas, and what we've seen in the line. As soon as I saw this figure, I was like, oh, my God, I need to have that. And it was that. That was the other $3 grab, guys. Look at that. She comes with Psy. That, that, that is so, such a sick figure, man. And hey, Grievance, my friend, you're here too. Awesome. So yeah, man, I'm, hey, Grievance, I'm just showing off a couple of $3 grabs I grabbed at Walmart. They're purging some stock in their clearance. And what I really hate about Walmart is some of their clearance, they don't even bother showing you what the price is or anything. They don't mark the product. They don't put a little sign anywhere. It's just all piled at the end of the aisle of crap we're probably thinking is on clearance. And half the time when you check it, it's not on clearance at all, right? But today those Joes were on clearance. Those Night Force were there, surprisingly, which they shouldn't be on the shelf. They're here, not all. They, they're supposed to be only through the online pickup system. So I figured they had to be returns. And then uh, $3 marble figs. Come on. That's too good. Uh, yeah. Hey, and there's my buddy Aaron just getting through the door. Yeah, buddy. I uh, figured you had a long day at work. I know I, I sent you and uh, and Drawl the... Uh, the invite, buddy, but if you're just tuning in, I imagine you're probably having supper, getting ready for the the night ahead. I fully understand, but uh, yeah, I'm just showing these guys. I was showing them, uh, I got you know the the new the new idea for the the shelving is. Uh, I'm still in the middle of doing it, but just I was showing them I was doing some. I hate that plastic. Working on terrain, cheap terrain, where I get my cheap terrain, some ways to consider space saving, uh, cheap shelving to get. So I talked about some of that stuff. Uh, and just remembering, like, uh, you know, uh, you can build up, not necessarily out, uh, just as easy sometimes. Uh, your shelf is this high, a standard figure is this high. And if you're only maximizing that lower layer, do something to maximize the upper layer. Put some depth and stands behind your figures. Maximize your shelf. And then you can just throw little pieces of foliage and crap in the way of the stuff that maybe you don't want them to see. Like what the fact that you used the full box of condoms from four years ago to stand your figures up. Right, Aaron? Like, you don't want people to see that. 
I don't know, Aaron. I thought it was a weak cast joke. We're, we're going to let the condom jar drop. Uh, so, yeah, I was really happy to get a $3 Electra Nachos uh, Daredevil. This is a soft, good piece right there, uh, which I suspected it would be. It looks like this hooded mask is... Oh, I was wondering about this. Even better, man. I was not sure. I should just heat that up, but... I thought this was a one-piece headpiece. It's not. So you get that head, but this scarf piece was sick. I wonder if I can make that work with any of my Black Oni or any other Joe figure, just because I think that's a sick scarf. But if not, I'm more than happy to leave it on this as I do that conversion and turn Black Renachos into a Black Oni assassin, do a complete repaint, add some kit, take away some stuff. I don't know. But a nice pair of sigh with that. And Aaron, I was telling these guys, $3 at Walmart today. I've never seen that. Uh, yeah, Crimson, there we go. All right. Yeah, so $3. So, Aaron, if you got some Walmarts in your area, I was telling these guys, my Walmart, my area, it's uh, starting to validate that stuff I was hearing, that Walmarts are going to stop or so at least minimize how many of their locations are carrying classified on the shelf. Uh, I was telling these guys we've had the the wave that preceded this one, uh, this last one. So uh, I saw shipwreck, I saw a torpedo and hawk, and the the dreadnoughts all hitting more prices around the twenty fives Canadian mark. So let's hear guys the seventeen mark. Uh, and uh, I started seeing night force a couple of figures appear on the shelf for some reason. So I'm telling my Canadian guys to go check Walmart. I'm telling U.S. guys go check Walmart and see uh, if maybe Walmart's doing some uh, some purging like we were just talking about. Uh, there you go. Yeah, three dollars, man. Yeah, we'll go with Jinx perfectly, and that was just it. That was the thing, guys. Like with my, yeah, I don't think ninjas make a lot of sense in a military-based toy, but I understand the comic booky fun time aspect of G.I. Joe, but I, I do think at some point Cobra's got to pick a lane. You know, well, who do you want to be, man? Because now they're doing even zombies. <laughs> well, Serpentors. Um, just too many threats. And then the the mystery of the ninja went away during the 80s and the 90s. And, uh, we, we, you know, you can't do much to redeem it. Like somebody else said in another chat, the closest good ninja movie I've seen in a long time is Ninja Assassin. Uh, everything else was kind of, eh. <laughs> but yeah, doing the black Oni ninjas was just uh, something to experiment with, with fun. It, it gave me justification for getting some good classified ninjas and giving them a place on my shelf, but it gave guys like, uh, gave me people for quick kick and the others to fight because, uh, I liked the Kamakura. I didn't mind Helix at all or Kira, Arik, uh, Akiko. But Quick Kick had surprised me. Now I wanted him scrapping people. Um, who else? Uh, and Jinx. Jinx is on their way, and I really want that one, man. Really do. So, yeah, I got to do that. Uh, oh, you found some cool stuff too, eh? Yeah, right on, man. Yeah, and I know you're going to make a video about that. And, guys, if you, uh, if you haven't done your channel surfing tonight, uh, I am ending this. Oh, I forgot to turn the clock on. <laughs> I will end this just before nine o'clock to give you guys time to go, uh, you know, do do all the right things. Smoke one, roll one, go to the bathroom, do whatever you got to do. Get ready for the next stream. You're going to watch that night. But maybe while you're doing it, you're going to want to check out Aaron, the Toy Enhancer's channel. He's uh, he's uploaded his video of the thing, that thing, nudge, nudge, that he picked up at, uh, at Toy Lanta there that I... I think I did a really good job censoring myself about considering how excited I was for him to finally reveal it. Um, yeah, and I won't tell you what it is, but it's uh, it's it's great we're talking about Joe Displays because I've got my way of doing it. Aaron's got a new thing for doing it for himself. It's going to look really weird. He already showed it with a bunch of figures. It looks great. Uh, Target is still getting a few of those things too. Which things? Oh. Of extra Destros and, and of a few shipwrecks, yeah. So somebody tell Punk the shipwrecks are back. 
Uh, Jay Oster Target. Yeah, and so Canada's uh, Arbor's as a target is essentially Toys R Us, right? Whatever, whatever Target seems to be carrying out there, we our Toys R Us are carrying it. I don't think they're doing as good of a, a job. And Aaron, I'm still looking for a retro snake guys for you. I just haven't been able to check every Toys R Us yet. The one near me didn't have it today or the other day, but I think there's probably a couple in town I can check there later in the week. See if I can't get that for you. But got some other fun stuff I can't show you. Mm. What can I show you? What can I show you? There was something I was going to show you. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle trucks. <laughs> you know I'm liking doing background trucks. Uh, I didn't make as big of a deal about this as I should have the other day. And Aaron, I'm going to show the Rams in a minute. But uh, this is that Ninja Turtle stupid green SWAT truck after you take a screwdriver to it. And do all the things you need to do, like rip out those stupid little missile sponsons so you can have somewhere for your Joes to lean out and shoot in a vehicle whose doors don't work. I thought, my God, I would have a door that worked right, but it did not. And uh, yeah, I got it because I liked the fact that I could see exactly how much seating it would have inside, right? Uh, so that's going to be another one of those quick and dirty. Um, dry brushes that I'm doing out in the garage when I'm smoking my medicine and hating my hating my knees and just enjoying a YouTube video. I sit there and dry brush because it gets messy and it's easier to do in the garage. But that big boy, that was seven bucks and it's got a winch. And all it needed was some primer paint and the screwdriver to take all useless guts out of it. What a what a what a nightmare it is to remove that stuff. Aaron, have you ever removed these? Uh, like, I know you said I have to gut that mech when it shows up in order to get a classified fig in there, but I know you you um you did the super vamp. I know you had some time wiring stuff and everything, but have you ever removed functional toy components from functional vehicles before and tried to figure out how the fuck their screw system works <laughs> anybody ever do that because it's a bastard man uh hang on we gotta get caught up toxic zombies is still come with sas cool yeah toxic zombies i lumped them in that's the same category as the mole man uh that night force line that walmart has i might have to try and grab a couple of mole men when i when i see an opportunity but i've never seen them in the wild on a shelf they're like shadow hunter and them so talks over zombies but you know what I mean, if you're going to do zombies and you're just, yeah, I, I would absolutely buy them. But the problem is, is zombies is a horde army, right? You know what I mean by that? Like, you don't just, you're not threatened by one zombie unless you're Carl. <laughs> you know what I mean? Sorry to use Walking Dead references, but uh, but uh, you would need multiple zombies. And one of the things I noticed, because I had a horde zombie list for my Nurgle army in Warhammer 40k if Wraith Mace ever watches this. It was like the seventh edition when they, I think they did that. And you were allowed to have these massive hordes of hundreds of zombies to just basically tar pit other armies because that's the benefit of the zombie. They might be slow and lumbering and, and whatnot, but they, within within arm's reach, they get pretty dangerous. And if you've got a billion arms swinging at you, that's great. My point being is uh, Joe's only going to create maybe a couple, if they do it, a couple of options and then what? You know, don't you want more zombies? I'm just going to try and get used to making zombies out of other characters. Steal a lot of zombies from other lines, I guess. Uh, let's go. Hey, Roman, good. Uh, you missed it all, man. All of it. Don't worry, buddy. Uh, I'm going to stay on for about another. Hmm, I keep setting shit down. Stay on for about another 10, 15 minutes and I'm going to call it so that guys can get ready for whatever nine o'clock stream they're watching. And uh, yeah, I use the bathroom to do all that stuff. But I was just talking about terrain. Uh, I'll tell you here really quick uh, before I move on to the chat, just to bring it back to terrain, guys. I know you got a lot of creative minded guys out there. I know I'm slow to get that uh, that video out where I've taken, I, I, I've got a file saved of the photos you saved me and some of the written stuff that you've saved me saved in a different file of Gasland Mechanics watches this. 
and I'm trying to decide what to do about it as far as a video goes. I thought about doing a flash video with your names under it. I thought about doing a special on it. I'm still working that out. Um, but like you, I, you know, I also think on these things on a spectrum level of creativity, you know, how do you not love comics and GI Joe and all that? And then stare at your shelf and not have a single creative thought outside of the existing lore. You can't, you must, you must have that on some way. Right. And uh, I find it's something that people, maybe, maybe you're all too shy to talk about it sometimes, or maybe people are just reluctant or they think, well, that's just inside my head. I don't feel like sharing with it. Or maybe they're just like, I think that's silly. And people will tell me I'm silly for it. I don't think that at all. If you cross your lines on your shelf and you bring another toy and like Ninja Turtles into Joe, uh, how'd you do it? What, what was your provocation? What, what made you want to do that? All right. That's cool. Explain it, man. Just make me understand it. Uh, but one thing I always start with, guys, is ye old sketchbook. Uh, anytime I'm thinking about something about my Joe stuff for end state or a vehicle I want to work on or or the shelf, right? This whole book that I bought was just for shelving. And uh, everything's got to have... A, a, I'm a very formulaic guy because I find if I put the forethought in ahead, I'm not wasting my time thinking of details on the fly. I'm thinking of specific details I want to core in. It's um, it's like trying to tune out a crowd of, of noises to pinpoint one. Picture Professor Xavier, and he puts on Cerebro, and, a, and he hears every mutant on Earth, and he's like, no, I just need that one. Ding. That's what this does for me when I work on projects. It lets me go, no, focus on that one detail. Don't try and build everything, right? So when I do these things now, I'll, I'll write out basically what it is I'm trying to describe. First, I think of what I'm trying to picture in my head, see if I can describe it on a piece of paper. Then I'll think of which, uh, which figures do I potentially want to go on that display with that. So for this one, I said this one's called the Northern Mission. And it was basically, uh, it revolved around Snow Job heading up to Banks Island, which is the Northwest Territory, way up north. Uh, and, uh, you know, running an investigation on, on disappearing communities and, and, and ranger station, right? And I decided he needed to have a cabin uh, because where would he stay? <laughs> He's not going to be staying in a tent. Uh, and then you kind of work from there. I looked at some areas of what Banks area looks like. I said, okay, what's achievable terrain that I can match? I can, some frosted bushes. Oh, oh, they've got that winter shelf effect. Okay, I can do that. Uh, adding an ice wall like the... Like the one I picked up at that thrift store. That oops, sorry, wrong way. Like that little ice wall to it. You know that'll be convincingly arctic enough. Then I can focus on doing finer details in from that, right? So I write all that down. I include down terrain. Uh, I want the ice castle frozen. It's three sections high. I want it broken down. I wrote that down. Frosted plants from the dollar store. White felt from the dollar store. Wood cabin scratch built because it's already done. Then for features, I said I want to focus on some trails cabin space uh the wall i want to make the cabin's wall look weathered uh and then small shoreline with a dock and the bobcat so that tells me that all of the things i want to include that because i've got that kayak coming through my v2 stalker i want to have a shoreline for that right uh oh aaron answered my question i'll get to that in a second and then of course i mentioned i wanted that bobcat in there and this rusty old bobcat toy because it makes sense uh in one of those rural communities uh you know, Buddy might have been loaning at the Bobcat throughout the whole community. They might want have one in a whole town. Somehow that's ended up at the cabin, right? Uh, just realistic for the scene I'm trying to create because it's not, not it's not an action scene. But, I mean, once you've got it built, you can either have it to display Joe's, you can have it to tell a story, or you can have it to display a battle, right? Um, and then I get into a sketch of what I want it to look like uh, based off what I logic out, right? So it would just be... An area like that. So if I come close to anything like this, where I've got the the cabin and maybe a van parked in the tree line and a little skidoo shed, and I've got that little shoreline and I've got woods and hills in the back. If I've done anything close to that, then all the work was worth it, right? And so that's what I was trying to say. And does that need to be a big display? Hell no. It's just got to fit in one Costco shelf. You not it could be that one. It could be a small one. It could have to fit on my desk shelf, right? Uh, that's why I, I hit that sketchbook and write this shit out very hard first. Okay. Aaron says vintage mass toys are the hardest one to work on. Yeah. 
sorry, I, 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 I said a half joking way, like seeing if anybody would correct me, right? Aaron, the toy and answer. Yes, he takes this shit apart, right? Uh, but it's so frustrating. This was me diving into his world, taking them apart. So they're the hardest ones for him to work on. They have a lot of springs and uh, sorry, some it's tell me, there we go. They have a lot of springs and levers and somewhat hard to put back together again. Yeah, uh, you saw, I dumped those things in there and I've done that a couple of times. Now that these are out, these might appear on something else as like, you know, wall generators or air conditioner units or something somewhere, but they serve as hell are not going back in there. <laughs> there is no way I'm tackling that. No, sure. I'll send it there and say, fix it, fix it, fix it. Uh, Grave Diver Creeps in the Phantasm, yeah. Talks of zombies were the last figures you got from the original line and you have 20 of them. Interesting. So that was your truth there. Cool. No, I mean that. Cool. I uh, I never knew anybody that had a Toxo vi Viper so, or Toxo Zombie. And, you know, I'm not for everything in the Joe line, but they do do a good job of making what was once undesirable makes you look twice. Big Boa, I love twice. I don't necessarily want them, but I see the play factor. I'm displaying them, but no, I won't light a fire to go get them. Um, are they the same as Toxo Vipers? I had one lower helmet. Uh, I bought grunt to my collector collection, but online certain transformers. Okay. Uh oh my gosh. Street Fighter, Predator. Yeah, okay. So yeah, lots of things can make your way into your line. And if you think there's not a thousand things that you can do with a big boa to, to go take it to other lines, big boa versus DC Superman, big boa versus shredder, big boa versus uh uh whatever poly pockets <laughs> big boa versus uh the cobra kai street fighter yeah, cobra kai uh mighty morphin power rangers you can just go all over that and just have a blast with photography so of course your shelf space man it's your joe universe create it any way you want uh all right well i said i would show you what i was doing with aaron's bikes okay i did a whole video on it today but i'm basically making my joe dispatch riders for uh to, to kind of go with these turtle trucks that i'm working on as you guys know i got two of these I'm, you know just doing the I, I haven't touched them in a couple of days but these will finish off quick and i'm just gonna make a little low bed for those rams to sit on now that i've got that larger vehicle i don't need to worry about maybe making one of them into an apc i think they're just both going to be just cargo trucks and having a little joe convoy there uh that, Call sign six six, which is a uh, call sign six six is a uh, brigade reconnaissance, right? And I'm turning it into a movements purse, but yeah, with reconnaissance assets, I guess, would be attached to just fight all you want. But it's also Route 66. I thought that would be cool to have their call signs be six six, uh, not six six six, uh, because uh, yeah, that's that's silly. <laughs> hey guys, uh, what else did I want to show you? The Rams, I'm just trying to find them. I had set them down and set them aside. I think I was showing a couple of guys them earlier. My gosh, this is what happens when you get so cluttered over here. But, mm, is that it? Is it there? That's one. Well, we found one. The gray one's, uh, the gray one's probably booming on the shelf right in front of me somewhere. There it is up there. All right. Uh, so I picked up this little trailer for a buck 99 because i thought maybe a ram would fit inside of it uh it does not but my little dirt bikes do and lots of other cargo could fit in here uh you know um but uh the rams as far as they go i have officially started the rams we are going to go with dispatch riders uh kitted out escorts for the convoy pair of these uh so don't worry it's not gonna be black it's not gonna be gray this again is how i go about starting with the repaint uh the black the the two-in-one krylon it's a mat this time not a flat uh and yeah i can miss some spots it's gonna be fun these are gonna go very light tan brown with some some uh pizzazz added to them uh but all i took off them in the end was the exhaust pipes and the and the uh windscreen anything else i think i would have broken them 
So I'm going to be working on those over the next few days because I do want to do dispatch riders for that convoy escort there. All right, zombies and headhunters were all my troop builders as kids. I really want to do a headhunter build. I thought I was going to start one, but then I shifted half the figures I was going to do that with to my 788. Uh, five night vipers. Night vipers is another one I want to start. Loki, Loki. Let's start some night vipers. <laughs> uh, Naga hide. Yeah, that would make a good trail for a good little uh trailer for Naga hide. Absolutely, you're not you're not wrong on that. I actually have a bear you seen kicking around in the back. I could throw it in there too, but uh, whatever. It's just little ads like that because you know what else this is. It's a perfect little piece of scenery, you know, tucked into the background, throw a couple of Joe backpacks in there. It's done. Right. Tells a little story. Yeah. They moved to this location. Can't you see they were hauling their shit there? Uh, right. Just little crap like that. And somebody, somebody let that go for a buck 99 at Valley Village today. What a wonderful day. Dollar 99 for a trailer, $3 for two good figures. <laughs> uh, yeah. And then lots of terrain stuff, guys. Um, I think that's pretty much all I was going to show you guys today. Aaron, I was showing these guys, uh, buddy. I know a while ago you did your video on the boxes and everything like that. And uh, I, I, I I, was waiting and waiting, saying, am I going to get more boxes? I still think I'm do a couple. And I need to do it for symmetry. But I just wanted to thank you for doing your video to, to give me the idea to do mine. And there's my box wall. And that's because of the uh, fantastic Cobra Joe family tree wall that Aaron did when he uh, very, like very early in his channel, if I recall. And it really resonated with me. Uh, but guys, that's a, that's a cheap little thing you can do for your backgrounds too, or your displays, right? They've already given you the product. So that's gonna that's gonna do her guys uh pork belly would look great on the trailer yep uh thrifty friday yeah buddy uh it was i had to go to walmart and uh pick up some stuff and i just walked by that twilight it was just like did i see that but dude but um as far as the 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 rest of it goes that was about uh six dollars uh which was the pocket change i had on me anyways and uh the plants were that's a weekly expense of uh, i find five dollars a week and you get more than what you need for the plants and everything like that but yeah i, I don't know what else to call this one it was really just talking about cheap diorama display and uh, display shelf space and so when i uh, you know i am gonna end it really quick soon if there's no questions um uh, shouldn't say really quick but i will ask the one thing guys his tanks vamps mmms mmmmmmm big big bowl of mms mmns oh by the way loki i'm getting these boxed up ready to go here shortly buddy i'm just trying to find you something else to get that box filled there so you know uh out of all of these things that are coming, and then you're going to add to this a ferret, perhaps a Night Force, uh, Night Force attack ram, some two packs of Tiger Force figures or Mad Marauders, uh, and then somewhere along there, maybe you join your Dragonfly. Where is this stuff going? Where will the next year's stuff go? After a while, the display space is going to become an issue if it isn't already, right? And so that's what I keep saying, guys. Uh, Costco shelving, a little bit of fabric, do all that. It doesn't have to be the most expensive thing in the world. But if you really love your, your collection, you're going to display it whatever way you want. But if display space is a problem for you, just mail it to me or Aaron the Toy Enhancer, and we'll proudly display it for you on our channel. Just ask us for the address. We'll display it for you for years and years to come. I swear we won't lose your address. <laughs> hey, I got to end this one tonight, guys. Uh you guys have a great night sorry again for the unpredictable nature of my lives uh this week we're going to uh go back to the weekend saturday lives as often as possible but again you know that cadet thing my son will always have that priority and uh if i thought it was worth doing after i would have but I, uh, I i don't get out and socialize a lot with my friends uh maybe once every couple of months i'll go to coffee with one so i'm gonna do that this time and uh you guys, I want you to go check out Crimson Vader, 
uh, sorry, Crimson Cobra Command. Cobra Crimson Commander. <laughs> hey, we're going to get this down right, okay? Uh, we'll get your name faster than me and Aaron and uh, Three Star got the uh, the backyard uh, backyard uh, battlefield, guys. The backyard battlefield club or whatever we are. That took us a long time. And we still, I still can't say it right. And I helped come up with the damn thing. I will get your name right, Crimson. Just stop changing it. You're good now. Don't change it again till tomorrow. But yeah, guys, check out his channel. Watch his videos. Give him that support. And if you have a piece of advice for him, give it to him. He needs it. He wants it. That's what he's asked for. And he wants to find his place in this community the same way any one of us making videos are. And don't y'all deserve the chance, right? So let's go support him the best we can. You guys go get ready for whoever's stream is on tonight. I'm going to go see who's showing up at 9 tonight. I think I know, but... And... Aaron's got some new stuff he's going to be uploading. I'm going to watch that, but make sure if you haven't watched his video on that, uh, that new Joe or Cobra thing that he got, you go check that out. And uh, I'll just go once through the stream. Thanks very much, Shane. Thank you, everybody, for coming out. Uh, yeah, Jay Astro, I know I will always put that sacrifice to display your figures. And DMAC is um. Oh, Demarcism, you just showed up as I was ending, or maybe maybe you're listening and just comment. That's great. Uh, and Bobby will take it later. 80s Toy Boy. Did I know you were in here, man? I'm sorry if you I might have missed some other chat when you showed up, but thanks very much for uh coming by. And uh Yeah. Uh Woody. Aaron, go do a live. Yeah, Aaron, go do a live. <laughs> All right, guys. Hey, uh, remember, no one's at the battle. We just did half of it. I don't know very much, guys, but uh, I know very much I'm having a great time with you guys, and I will see you guys in the uh, in the other streams. Take care. Bye.